Oh, hey there, guys. It's your favorite backyard geographer. I was out in the garage, going through my junk, and I thought of you. So, Roald Dahl would change the world with his writings. Titles such as Charlie Bucket and Willy Wonka, James and the Giant Peach, even Matilda. But one of his greatest stories was never finished. A partnership with him and none other than Walt Disney. I'm proud to present to you The Gremlins. So you might be asking yourself, who are the Gremlins? Well, I mean, what's interesting about the story is that Rule Dahl and Disney had a great relationship. They had been designing this stuff in the early 1940s, but unfortunately in 1943, the plug had to get pulled on a bigger feature film. Specifically because the story of the Gremlins didn't really belong to the U.S. and it didn't really belong to Rule. It actually belonged to the British. And so there was a technical difficulty there and it was just easier to not have to deal with it. But don't worry, Gremlins still went on and lived today. So Rule would persuade Walt to first produce his illustrated story of these mischievous mythical creatures that were sabotaging British aircraft as revenge of the destruction of their forest home during the war. The main character, a pilot, would inspire the Gremlins to help the British fight Germany to end the war. The book would further explain that the males were called Gremlins, the females were called Fifinellas, and the babies were called Widgets. The term gremlin actually dates back to the 1920s as a slang term that pilots and technicians would use to describe the random equipment failures that were happening in aircrafts. So speaking to the book, which I have, this is a newer um, production of, only 50,000 copies of the original book were made in the U.S. and Rule would actually hand deliver a copy of his book to the First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt. The book was a huge success, but copyright problems began surfacing and the project would be dropped altogether. So to kind of speak to the book, the book was obviously written by Ruol, but was animated inside by Disney legend Bill Justice, as well as Al Dempster and the cover by none other than Mary Blair. Well, lucky for us, the gremlin culture wasn't just limited to the book, as Disney had already begun producing plush characters, introducing them in the comics, the Walt Disney comics, numbers 33 through 41, as well as in commercial ads. In fact, this one here is a Lifesavers ad. This really, really upset Rule because he didn't want his characters to be solicited. And so this really bothered him that the Disney company went behind his back, in a sense, and began producing commercials with his characters on them. During World War II, the Wasp, W-A-S-P, asked permission to use this character right here, Fifanella, to be part of their official mascot. And the Walt Disney Company agreed. The official Fifanella went to war and was worn on some patches. Some were done on leather, some were on cloth, worn on the wasp jackets. But who were the wasp? Well, during World War II, a select group of young women pilots became pioneers, heroes, and role models. They were the women of Air Force Service pilots, wasp, the first women in history trained to fly American military aircraft. So the Lifesaver ad says, Gremlin Chasers. You've heard of the gremlins, pesky little troublemakers that hang around airfields, army camps, ports of call, and battle stations. One good antidote for gremlins is lifesavers. They cheer a fella up when the gremlins get them down. Maybe that's why our armed forces are ordering so many of them. So, if you have trouble getting some favorite flavor, blame it on the gremlins. So this plush here. Seamstress Charlotte Clark, responsible for the early Mickey Mouse stuffed dolls, produced dolls based on Disney designs of the Gremlins, Fifanellas, and the Widgets. What's interesting is that there are several existing photos of Walt and Doll posing very happily with these dolls. These sold for $1.50 a piece, and the widget in particular was made in three colors. It still has the original tag as well. So as I mentioned before, even though a movie was never actually completed, the Disney company really was investing and really pushing these characters. So here is a very classic Walt Disney production uh, puzzle. This was done in the 1940s. Uh, in fact, this one in particular is a Pinocchio puzzle. But what's interesting is if you look at all the other characters on the sides of the box, here you've got the three little pigs, you've got some deer, but on this corner right here, there you've got it, hidden, a gremlin, and a widget. So is this really interesting how the company was so invested in producing these little characters on so many different pieces of merchandise, yet the movie never made it? 
So I'd like to spend a moment to just kind of speak about the artwork. So as I mentioned before, we have the cover of the book was done by Mary Blair and the inside, the drawing itself and the animation by one of the great Disney legends, Bill Justice. So I have the opportunity and the pleasure of having a, a lot of the original drawings and artwork by him as you can see behind me. I have a beautiful um, color exhibit that he did uh, where he signed the bottom, but I wanted to share some smaller drawings and pencil pieces of just the characters to just kind of bring it more to life because as we know this really never became much of anything it has been seen in pop culture which we'll talk about later but to just to kind of introduce these characters and how mischievous and funny that they were so let's begin with this first image here so here's some drawings this is done on a very thin uh, transparency paper but I guess I love it I mean here's you know the little gremlin with the container of aspirin shoveling them into someone else you know, here there's some people drinking out of a martini glass, playing, you know, a game. You know, it's, just, it's very cute and endearing. Here's another one I can share. So these are more action gremlins. <laughs> Again, mischievous, scissors, you know, a small handgun chasing a snail. You know, and just the fact that these are hand inked and drawn, I mean, just really that artwork is just what really is impressive to me. These are some fun pencil half sheets that Bill had done. So here we can see one of the little babies, the widgets, and the Fifanellas, the women. I think the best part of all of this is that they're all signed. What's interesting, which is something that I'm not familiar with, and maybe you know, in the bottom of all of these, they have a little code. Like this one here, a little bird there. It says V12P45. I don't know what that means. I love that one. This actually reminds me, because Bill Justice actually uh, developed Chip and Dale, and so one of my favorite shorts they did was the night one where uh, you've got Chip writing Dale, and so that's what that kind of reminds me of there. Here's another one. This is kind of cute. It reminds me of Robin Hood. Just so simple, their design, but without little mouths, but you still get a whole lot of emotion out of them. And then my last pencil drawing I have here, which is I thought was kind of cute. It's perfect for Halloween. And so here is a cute little Fifanella with a carved up pumpkin. is most interesting about Disney culture is that, you know, chances are you probably have never heard of the Gremlins, but and the reality is you kind of have. Where have we seen this in pop culture? Well, not long after this, you have seen reference to this in the Twilight Zone's Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. Even Steven Spielberg's 1984 movie, the same name, took reference to these little critters. And for those who are gamers, they also make a debut in Epic Mickey. Well, maybe you've seen the Gremlins, maybe you have seen the book, Maybe you've played Epic Mickey. Maybe you've just seen some form of reference of this. Be sure to like this video, comment below, and we'll talk soon. Rule would persuade. So rule would. So rule would rule. Rule. Rule would persuade. It's how it rule. It's how you say his name. <laughs> Did you know that it's rule? I know that's R O A L D, but it's actually pronounced rule.